Now we will look at uh, how do we identify these outliers in the data. And of course, uh, once we identify it, how do I eliminate? Again, uh, people use uh, different kinds of mechanisms. If the value is uh, very high, very low, subjectively they do the process. Right? If, if any one particular value is looking very high or very low, they are trying to simply eliminate that saying this is an outlier. But statistically, we need to know whether it's a statistical outlier or not. From that standpoint, I will introduce you to a graph which is called as a box plot. <laughs> this particular chart, what it does is it identifies what are the allowed ranges. Right, of course. Uh, and for that, it uses uh, the concept of standard deviation. In all our descriptive statistics earlier, there was a value that was computed which was the standard deviation. You see, there is a value which is the standard deviation that was computed. What is the standard deviation? It says on an average, see there is a center value. The center value let's say in this case is 3.23. This is the middle value. Right? On an average, there is a deviation of 0.41 units. 0.41 units away from the center. See, so, uh, the center is 3.2. 3.23. But there are some values which are 2 point something. There are some values which are 4 point something. Whatever, whatever. There are different, different values. Which are not exactly 3.23 but deviating from 3.23. If I take all those deviations together and take the average of all those deviations. Right? I take all the deviations and take the average of those deviations. That is what I can interpret as a standard deviation. So, probably here I can interpret on an average every value is around 0.41 units away from the mean which is 3.23 units. So what happens is, if the standard deviation is very very high, the interval becomes very wide. Because on an average, the values are these many units away from the center. The interval becomes very large. And if the standard deviation is smaller, the interval is in a narrow interval. Right? So, so that's where uh, the standard deviation actually represented uh, by a symbol called sigma. When people use six sigma and these kind of terms, it's nothing but my intention is to reduce the standard deviation. Because the deviation, <coughs> if it is much, much higher, Probably my minimum, the difference between my minimum value and maximum value is so high. My process is not consistent. So my intention is always to reduce the standard deviation. And now, <coughs> when I typically look at something as a normal distribution, the standard deviation plays a very key role. By how much are the values deviating? Now, what people have observed, okay, if something is a bell curve, what they have observed is, the center is the mean. And, if something is a normal distribution, probably one standard deviation to the left and to the right. One standard deviation to the left and to the right. If I count the number of observations, approximately 68% of the observations will lie between those two. If I look at it as a normal. If it is a normal, taking, so which means, probably if I have to take the same example, 3.23 is the mean. 0.41 is the standard deviation. So, 3.23 plus 
3.64 or something. 3.23 minus 0.41 which is 2.82. Between 2.82 and 3.64, approximately 68% of the total observation should lie. If my total observations are 475, approximately 68% of them, whatever it works out to, they should lie between 2.82 and 3.64. That's one rule. If something has to be more normal in nature. Apart from we saying skewness equal to... And of course, all these are interrelated rules. Right? If skewness equal to 0, cutoff is equal to 0, obviously I will find 68% of them lying between plus or minus standard deviation. And similarly, another standard deviation, this side and this side, plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean, I will find approximately 95% of the data. Almost 95% of my data should lie between the plus or minus two standard deviation limits itself. And almost 99.97%, 96% Elements should lie between plus or minus three standard deviations. As per the concept of normal distribution. I mean, no value literally can lie beyond the plus or minus three standard deviations limit. In case something is lying, it is an outlier. Right, Because as a behavior of the normal distribution, almost what we are saying is 68% should lie between plus or minus 1 standard deviation, 95% between plus or minus 2 and almost 99.9 .9 plus between plus or minus 3. That is a property of a normal distribution of a normally distributed data, of that bell curve data. Now, if something is outside, so probably let's say three, three standard deviations is 3 into 0 0.41, probably 1.2, 1.3. Three standard deviations is around 1.23 something. 3.23 plus 1.23, 4.46, something like that. Right? Any value which is beyond that 4.46 should be treated as outlier. If I am doing it theoretically, it goes like that. Right? Or probably on the lower side also like that only. 3.23 minus 1.23. Right? 2. Any value that is below 2, I have to treat it as outlier. That's a statistical way of finding out the outliers in your data. And now, sometimes what people also do is, why look at that, uh, I mean, see, that, that outliers probably are how much, as we said, 99.9 .9 should lie within this. So, around 0.1% should be outside. So, that 0.1% could be any big value also. Any big value or any small value. Which is making the data more and more biased. So, probably if that 0.1%, if I eliminate, how much 0.1% of 1000? 1% of 1000 is 10. 0.1% probably is 1. 1 or 2 or 3. See, if I eliminate those 1, 2, 3, probably if it comes into normal. Now, it is not coming.